and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's how-to, we're talking tension! But not that kind of tension, it's actually chain tension, as you can see behind me here, and our special guest is Brian Soloway. He is the U.S. Sales Manager with Timken Drives, and Brian, welcome to the program. How are you, my friend? Fantastic, how are you doing, Tom? Excellent, you know, the only thing I, I know about tension is, you know, I went to the doctor one time and I dreamed I was a wigwam, and then I dreamed I was a teepee, you know what he told me? What are you talking about? I'm too tense. Oh, thank you. But that's not what we're talking about here today. We're actually talking about chain tension. So what do we need to know, Brian? Many people don't understand that an important part of proper chain tension is how much catenary slack is at the bottom. Cat in the hat what? <laughs> what was Cat that? Catenary slack. Okay. That's the term for the slack in the chain caused by gravity. And a certain amount of it is not only desirable, it's actually necessary to, to prolong the wear life of your chain. A chain that is too loose or even too tight doesn't allow lubrication to freely flow into the pin and bushing areas. Well, I, we definitely know that's not a good situation, is it? No, in fact, I know of a situation involving a chain used on a conveyor at a plant that makes french fries. This was a food grade chain that went right into the frying oil with the potatoes, but because it was too tight, the chain still wasn't getting enough proper lubrication, even though it was submerged in oil. So the chain of the food chain. Yes. Man, that's not good. That, that, that's it. Too much slack is definitely a bad thing, right? Yeah, that's correct. Too much results in shock loading, jumping, and vibration of the chain. In some cases, the chain may even hit the case. And we're talking about stuff where it's like, this, this, is, just, this is bad right here, right? Very bad, yes. You know? Naturally, it'll vary from application to application, but there are some rules to keep in mind. Okay, and that's, that's why we have our demonstration. That's why we have our model here, right? Yes. This is a model of a simple chain system outfitted with Timken Drive's Precision Roller Chain. For safety reasons before servicing or lubricating any chain system, be sure to follow the appropriate lockout, tag out, and power out procedures. Now let's put on our safety glasses and gloves. Yeah, and while Brian's uh, putting on his glove and glasses, I want to remind everybody that uh, the proper PPE is always important. Safety is priority number one. Uh, for this demonstration, um, we recommend gloves and glasses. Brian has his on ready to go. I've got mine. Brian, floor is all yours. All right. Like this horizontal drive system, ideally you want the slack on the bottom so that the chain can freely release and fall away from the sprocket teeth. So let's see, we're gonna make this a little tight right here. So that's kind of tight, and this is, that's what we want right there, right? Yes. Okay. Now, if the chain slack is on top and the chain elongates and falls onto the sprocket, the chain could only grab onto the sprocket teeth, resulting in high shock load to the chain. So how are we gonna do this? So what happens? If this is too loose, this is no good. Right, it's just gonna whip around and you're gonna, you're gonna come down and contact those teeth and okay. you could get a lot of problems. Okay, that's not good. No. Okay, so how do we get the proper tension? So in order to get the proper tension, you wanna measure the center distance of the chain, which is done by measuring from the center of one shaft to the center of the other. If that distance is three feet or less, you want your cantonary slack to be between four and 6% of the center distance. So for example, mm -hmm. this chain has a center distance of two and a half feet or 30 inches. That means the slack should be between 1.2 and 1.8 inches. Okay, so how do we actually check to see if we have the correct amount of tension here? You need only a straight edge and a ruler. Okay, we got our straight edge right here. Place the straight edge at the bottom of each sprocket. Okay. And then you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure the distance from the bottom of the ruler to the chain. Okay. And Here we have... About 1.5. 1. 1.5. 1. 1 1 inches. Yes. Okay. Which right. is within the safe range. All right, but, but what if this is, you know, obviously this is a demo. So let's say we've got something bigger than three feet. What do we do? For chain longer than three feet, the recommended slack is 2% of the center distance. If your chain is too tight or too loose, the best solution is to have one shaft that is adjustable so you can set the tension within the recommended range. Easy enough, okay, we're all done. So, it's, that's not it, is it? No, yeah, no not so fast. That. Okay. Our model here is configured as a horizontal system, which is the most common, but there are other ways chain can be configured, and in some of them, cantonary slack is not feasible. Okay, then let's go over those. How, what, what are they? There are three systems that shouldn't have any slack. The first is any system with a large sprocket ratio. When the chain goes from a small sprocket to one that is more than seven times larger, the small sprocket may not have the required 120 degree wrap. Second is what we just did, reversing the drive system. Slack in the chain results in high shock loads to the chain when it is reversed. All right, and third? Third is a vertical system in which the chain is oriented at anything greater than 45 degrees. Chain slack results in the chain falling off the lower sprocket. All right, and we're actually going to lift this up for that, am I right? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And you said this will loosen our tension here? Yep, that'll give you a little okay. bit of loose tension. 
Oh, you can actually see that falling off the sprocket. You can see down there, the teeth are now exposed. That's not good. No. In all three systems, the chain can't have any slack, but it still can't be over tight either. That's why we recommend a tensioner to provide the appropriate tension on the chain. Okay, and I see you have that one right over there. That yeah. is the tensioner. Yes, and I'll press it against the chain. All right, like that. Okay. Now, see what happens? Yeah, now the chain is secure against the sprocket. Exactly, and we didn't have to over tighten the chain to achieve the desired effect. Okay, but Brian, everybody has to know that in the real world, someone isn't standing there holding a tensioner against the chain. So how do you know actually how much pressure needs to be put on the chain? That's a great question, and it can vary from chain to chain. That's why you'll want to check with the manufacturer of that specific chain and find out what its load limits are. The force you want the tensioner to exert should be anywhere from 0.5%, that's half a percent, to 2% of the tensile strength of the chain. And if we want any information, we can always get a hold of Timken Drives too, can't we? Absolutely. Brian, thank you so much. Appreciate great information. That was Brian Soloway, the U.S. sales manager for Timken Drives. Now, if you do have any questions about anything you saw here today, you can always contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They'll be able to help you out. Hopefully, this will assist you in your practical application. And as you can see, we had on our gloves and our glasses wearing the proper PPE for this particular demonstration. Make sure you wear the proper PPE for whatever your job calls for. And also look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. And um, don't be tense. <laughs>